What is the most odd matter of getting money that you have ever seen or heard about in your life? Story 1. Grandmother for Hire When I was overseas about 40 years ago, the back alley where I lived had a sort of specialty brothel in it. Old ladies, and we're talking like 60 plus, were for hire to be your grandmother for a few hours. They'd cook you a meal, clean you up after, listen to you talk, go shopping with you, and yes, even be your personal jilf if you were into that sort of thing. It kind of made me readjust my whole fairly innocent up until then worldview. Story 2. Professional Cuddling, where individuals offer their services to provide a non-intimate physical affection and cuddling to clients in exchange for payment. Story 3. When I was younger, I knew a heavily overweight girl that had a deal with a fetishist. She wouldn't wash her feet for a week and would wear the same socks every day. Then he would lick her feet and pay her a ton of money for it. She was obviously a consenting adult and there was nothing sexual involved, but oh god, it was just weird and disgusting. Yet, there she was, earning money with bad hygiene. Yeah, I never really understood the foot fetish thing. I had a friend who got a vape and 200 bucks from a guy, along with juice, for him to just massage her feet. Personally, I can get behind a nice pair of well-groomed, well-kept, clean feet. General hygiene to me is attractive on all parts of the body. But when you're paying the kind of money that these guys do to get a nice full whiff of someone's two-week-old, unwashed little piggies at the market, that's where I draw the line. Story 4. One of the most odd manners of getting money that I've ever heard about is professional bed warming. In this unique job, individuals are hired to warm beds for clients before they get into them. Story 5. I found out men can make a living donating sperm from the age of 22 to 27. A very close friend of mine found this out the hard way. He now has 11 siblings and counting from the same sperm donor he was conceived from that keep coming out of the woodwork on 23andMe. There are likely dozens, if not hundreds more, from that one donor. They tracked him down and made contact, and he has a relationship now with one of the siblings. Sperm donorship and insemination practices used to be really not great. This happened to a friend of mine too, and she has a ton of half-siblings. She's really happy to have a large and growing family though, and several of them have gotten together to meet. They're all on the artistic and vegetarian side, despite growing up in totally different environments. It's really cool. So I looked into this, and a lot of places don't pay, so like Canada, it's actually illegal to pay sperm donors. But one of the countries in Europe that does pay is Germany, 80 euros a pop. And in the US, the Phoenix Sperm Bank pays 100 for each donation, 70 at the time of donation, and 30 when the sample is bought and by someone. It says on their site that on average, healthy men are able to earn up to 1500 bucks a month US. <laughs> that's... that's a good chunk of change. Story 6. There's a guy in Australia who gets paid to crash funerals. Arranged by the deceased prior to death, of course. He's hired to call out the people who turned up but hadn't seen the deceased for years. Sometimes he's hired to do different things, but that's the most common one for him. He also starred on an episode of This American Life, and has several articles written about him. Story 7. The US Mint had a program that you could order large amounts of the new dollar coin in order to get it more accepted and into circulation. They offered free shipping as well, so enterprising individuals would buy large amounts with their credit cards that have reward points or reward cash to get those points and that cash, and then take the coins directly to their bank and deposit them into their account, keeping the difference of points as extra profit on top. The problem with this was that porch pirates also caught on, so when these packages were delivered to people's front doorsteps, they would get stolen pretty quick, and then folks would lose out on the profit entirely. Also, banks started to catch on about what was happening as well, and were pretty pissed about having to take so many large deposits of coins, and credit card companies began calling these purchases not eligible for rewards points. So basically, the US government created an infinite money hack, and everyone else had to rein that in before it got out of hand. Love it. Story 8. When I was in college, I used to go into the dorm trash rooms at the end of each semester, and fish out the books that were being thrown away. I'd then take them to a bookstore, and get paid for a trade-in. Story 9. I don't know if odd is the right word, but certainly cringeworthy. My coworker works PT at Goodwill. She grabs the good stuff that's donated and sells it on Poshmark. I told her I thought that was unethical, and her response was, how so? Decent side hustle if you're a garbage human being. Story 10. Apparently, several parcel companies in the US, like FedEx, 
have a system where, if their packages are not delivered in time, the customer has the right to demand damages for it. Most never do, as it's a big hassle. But a guy made a computer program that does this automatically. It basically buys the package's ID from the company, then extracts the damages from them, and makes a lot of money from it. And I mean a lot. He actually sells this computer program, which is how I found out about it. Unfortunately, it can't be used in my country due to our laws. Story 11. A white guy I went to high school with lived in China in the late 2000s for a while, and would get hired to present Chinese companies' presentations in English to crowds of Chinese-only speakers at conferences. He had no idea about the subject matter. It was things like bioscience, chemical engineering, and whatnot. But it was seen as prestigious to have a Westerner present for your company in English. He said there were never any questions, because he was pretty certain that no one could understand anything he was saying. Story 12. I used to have an extremely strange job I did on and off for about a year. There was this tiny place that opened an office in my town, which was rare in itself, but it was a Chinese importing company. I needed a job and felt like taking a chance. I went in one day and asked if they needed help with anything. They basically imported random Chinese-made goods, furniture and appliances and stuff like that, that ended up getting sold under numerous generic brands. The job I got was assembling the things using the horribly translated instructions, and then rewriting the instruction manuals in normal-sounding English. It was actually a pretty cool little gig, and I got to keep the stuff I assembled. They'd throw me a few hundred bucks an item. A little more if it was larger, or more intricate. Less if it was really small. Story 13. Some guy in Nigeria said I was owed a few million dollars because his heir passed away. All I have to do is send him a cashier's check to cover the charges, and I'm rich! That's how I made my fortune. Poor guy got ignored by so many people, but I decided to step in and help out. I sent the check, and sure enough, a few months later, I received the 500 million they promised. I used the money to buy as many trucks as I could to create a fleet of mobile ball polishers. You need a ball polished? Well, fear not. You won't need to leave your house. We'll come to you and polish your balls. We'll polish any kind of ball. Big, small, irregularly shaped, doesn't matter. We'll have your balls sparkling like a crystal clear pond at high noon in the summer. Story 14. Years ago, a panhandler approached me in New York City, saying he needed 85 cents for his bus fare home. Five hours later, the same guy approached me, asking again for 85 cents. Because I'm nosy and curious by nature, as I was a journalist for more than 20 years, I asked him what was up with that. He explained that 85 cents was the magic number. Asking for a dollar, people ignored him. Asking for less than 85 cents, people would give him pocket change. But asking for 85 cents, more often than not, got him a dollar. He lived in New Jersey, and he commuted in like any working Joe. He was sober, sane, moderately well-dressed, with a button-down shirt and jeans, and just a regular guy with an odd hustle. Story 15. People doing animal communication. It's not a real job that needs any qualifications, and I heard the weirdest stories. I'm a farrier in training, and the best story is from one friend of a customer. She sent a picture to one of these self-named animal communications pros, and she told her that her gelding wants to eat more carrots and wants pink bow braids in his mane. That makes 120 euros a pop. They just receive a picture and tell you what's up with your horse. <laughs> no, what they do is screw with people and profit off their incompetence. We're going to hop into the rapid fire section in just a moment here, but I wanted to throw this last honorable mention in the mix, as it's a weird one. A human decanter. A friend who is an ER doctor ran into one with medical complications from the process. Now, as defined by Urban Dictionary, a human decanter is a man who uses a catheter to empty his bladder of all urine and replace it with wine. He then urinates the wine into guests' glasses. I can definitely see how that might lead to some medical complications. And now onto the rapid fire segment of the video for stories too short to make a full entry out of, but too good to be left out. Let's jump in. Being a model patient. Basically, you're pretending to be a patient for people in med school to get practice. Hot women selling their farts. I mean, what the actual f***? There was a website that offered to deliver a full box of cow dung to anyone you hate. There's a firefighter gig in Hawaii where a dude on a helicopter just shoots feral hogs all day to keep the population down. Selling your feces for research. I've seen homeless people buy bottled water with their food stamps, pour out all the water in the parking lot, and then go redeem the bottles for cash, which is 10 cents a bottle. Making money the old-fashioned way. Getting run over by a Lexus. 
I deliver bad news for people as a little side hustle. It's kind of hilarious, the things I get paid to say sometimes. TikTok stars. It's not so much that they make money, but how much money they make. In 2015, I started a website while drunk and sold $150,000 worth of dick gummies. One of my friends was offered 40 bucks before to slap a guy's balls. The guy made the offer. Training crows to bring you money and rewarding them extra in particular when they bring you large bills. Now don't forget to leave your odd money hack in the comments below, as I like to do viewer stories as well. That's all for now. My name is Redlist. I hope you all have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.